Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are doing the middle of the month love readings. This is going to be for all zodiac signs. I want to welcome you guys for those of you guys that are new to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button so you guys can help the algorithm on this channel. For those of you guys that are returning, welcome back my lovelies. Let's get into it. Let's see what Spirit has for you guys for the remaining of the month of February 2022. We're going to start off with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. And spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please give us clarity and insight, understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. What is unfolding for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus regarding their love life for the month remaining of February 2022? Let's see what's going on. How are you doing, Aries? Hope you guys had an awesome Valentine. Okay, so we're starting off with the Queen of Wands and the Page of Pentacles being assertive. Um, be practical in your approach, uh, Aries, uh, for the remainder of the month. Um, this can also indicate communication coming through for you guys, a communication you've been waiting or expecting for quite some time. I'm going to put them back in here. We're going to get you know, shuffling. All right, one more shuffle. All right, we're starting off with the same card that popped out, <laughs> Page of Pentacles. There's communication coming in. You may be dealing with an Earth energy, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. Uh, this could also indicate, like I said, uh, wanting to hear from someone. Uh, there could have been some type of distancing, uh, or it could be someone that is not currently communicating with you that you will be hearing from them from now all the way to the end of this month. Next card in the bottom. Same card, Queen of Wands. This is your energy, Aries. Uh, being confident in yourself. I see you guys uh, probably experiencing a lot of like putting effort and energy towards business and your finances. Seven of Pentacles. Yeah, I definitely see someone from the past returning. Someone, like I said, that you have not heard from uh, for a bit. You That's if you haven't already received communication. The next card here is the Eight of Pentacles, Page of Swords, Seven of Swords. The Wheel of the Year, Queen of Pentacles, definitely Earth Energy here with the Two of Pentacles. Um, so I do see you guys uh, either communicating, receiving some type of message uh, from someone from the past that may want to come back into your life, Aries. Um, I feel like this person in the past perhaps wasn't completely honest with you or transparent. Um, I feel like they are relinquishing or letting go of old traits or old patterns uh, it could have been a situation where things didn't really take off um for others of you if you were in a long-term committed relationship with someone um that wasn't completely honest or perhaps deceived you could have been a cheater could have been someone that um wasn't honest um i feel like they're returning and the reason why they're returning is because they're feeling like uh, perhaps you were the best thing that ever happened to them. I see them wanting to change certain things. It's almost like they want to revisit the past or they want to know uh, if they still have an opportunity with you, Aries. Um, the will of the year here with the Queen of Pentacles definitely indicates them being a little bit much more genuine and authentic in their connection with you. I feel that the decision is going to be up to you, Aries. Um my advice would be especially because, you know, we just recently um, experienced Venus retrograde and we're still in the shadow phase of it. I would highly encourage you guys not to jump in, not to jump in uh, to giving any type of effort in something that perhaps was slow and burning. Um, could be that there was uh, some deceiving in this connection in the past perhaps for some of you guys you guys never really stopped communicating but it was more on a you know once in a while type of communication um things definitely didn't go out the way they expected so i do see a return or a wanting to revisit like i said i would highly encourage you to put it off probably till the beginning of march um to make any type of decision because you do have the two of pentacles here and this is in balance uh, this can also represent having the need to make a decision. 
but it's a decision without really having much to uh, much to really rely on, especially if you haven't heard from this person in a while. Uh, so don't be quick to jump into any type of commitments or any type of, yes, let's revisit, let's rekindle. Um, there has to be some type of consistency here uh, with that person. Um, so allow them to put effort in regaining your trust, if at all possible. Um, yeah, I feel very strongly like they're feeling like they missed an opportunity or they're feeling like they did you dirty. Um, you were definitely not deserving of this type of treatment. Um, and they're wanting to go back to, because they've realized, they've came to the realization um, of what you mean to them or what could have potentially be. Um, so they're wanting to see if things can go anywhere. Um, but like I said, don't jump or don't be very quick into uh, trusting this person completely. Let them show you through actions, all right? All right, my lovelies. Now let's get let's get on to Taurus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, what are the messages that you have for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month remaining of February 2022 regarding their love life, love and romance? Okay, so we have the King of Cups. I see you guys being a little bit more emotionally available for some of you guys, um, especially those of you guys that have been single for quite a while. Um, it's like I see you guys, you know, trying to get back into the dating scene or trying to get your feet wet to see, you know, what's out there. Um, what they're telling you here is don't be don't be too guarded. Give yourself the opportunity to connect with people um, and don't be very quick to judge Taurus. Um this is something that I feel like in the past perhaps has um, has something to do with affecting your relationships or connections. It could be that either you don't like you're extremely guarded and you don't allow people to really get to know you. Uh, for others of you, it is a general reading. Keep that in mind. You may wear your heart on your sleeve and that puts you in a position of being taken advantage of. So again, um, be wise in regards to that. Don't be completely guarded. Um, really be okay with showing who you really are. Uh, not necessarily just in romance, but every every aspect of your life. Um, it's okay to speak up or to stand up for ourselves, um, especially where it matters. So I'm going to put it back in. Okay, one more shuffle. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. Your first card here is the Page of Wands. So there's communication coming in for some of you guys. Again, I feel like for some, if not the majority, you guys are going to start to experience a lot of movement in regards to your love and romance. Uh, a lot of opportunities to go out to mingle with people. Uh, for some of you guys, you're being a little bit more proactive. Um, those of you guys that have been stuck in the mud for a while, I see you guys like venturing onto social media, um, dating sites, stuff like that where you're becoming a little bit more open um, to the dating scene. So that's that's a good thing. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, the next card here is the Ace of Cups. So again, love is definitely in the air for you guys. Um, we have the Empress. Now is the perfect time to put yourself out there, Taurus. Uh, you have a major positive cards here, and this is indicative of perfect timing to look for love or to find love or to give in to love. Okay. First card here is the Queen of Swords, the Moon card, Shadow Side, which is the Devil card, the Five of Cups, Tower, Four of Cups, Two of Cups, Ace of Wands, Knight of Swords, and the Queen of Cups. I think I pulled out a lot of cards for you guys, but let's just go with it. Um, so what I'm hearing is definitely for some of you guys, you were holding on to a relationship or a connection for far too long. Uh, it could have been that that connection expired, meaning uh, you should have learned certain things and moved on from it for quite a while. And I feel like you held on to it um, because of comfortability or because the feeling of this is what I recognize. This is where I've been for a while. Um, however, I do see the tower. So for some of you guys, there is a breakup. There could have been a recent breakup, a separation, um, 
or some type of acknowledgement that you're over or you've outgrown this relationship. Now, I do feel like for some of you guys, this, you know, I'm hearing like for some of you guys, especially those of you guys where there was a recent separation, um, like you're feeling like, I can't believe this happened, but did you really not think it was going to happen to us? Because with the five of cups, I'm feeling like you were emotionally drained. You were not having that emotional or loving support that you needed for a very long time. Because uh, the four of cups indicates that. So again, I feel like it was a surprise to some of you guys. But in reality, it wasn't really a surprise. It was inevitable. Um, the beauty in this is that the moment that you start to instead of fight off the ending or the conclusion or the ending chapter of the situation, the sooner you are to accept what is and continue on your path, you're going to be greatly surprised, Taurus, because I do see love coming in for you. And this is something that is going to be very sudden and very quick. We have the Ace of Wands here, uh, which is indicative of strong passion, desire, excitement, new beginning. The Knight of Swords is uh, this person coming in rather quickly with the Two of Cups, a genuine connection. And the Queen of Cups here, right at the center, emotional connection. So again, I feel that if you've been holding on to, um, even for some of you guys, the holding on to an ex, what they're telling you is it's time to let go of that. The shadow side with the moon card definitely indicates our subconscious level uh, or our subconscious um, not fully aligning to, um, th there is something about your subconscious that you're refusing to either accept or realize with the shadow side, uh, uh, signifying the devil card there's certain toxic traits that you don't either you don't accept within yourself or you're not aware of and i'm going to be honest i feel like a lot of taurus don't you guys have a tendency of being very independent but i feel like when it comes to relationships you you guys become overly dependent um so this could be that you become either overly independent in the sense of um Feeling like you don't want to, like, even if a relationship came to an end, you kind of don't want to move on from it. Uh, whether it's because you feel like you need them financially uh, or the living situation or, you know, that type of energy. And it has more to do with, like, dealing with what is because of circumstance versus saying, you know what, this is not working out, picking up my shit and I'm going um, I feel that there's a refusal in that or there's been a refusal for a lot of you guys. And with the shadow side, this is something that you need to be aware of uh, because this definitely hinders your happiness. Um, it, there is a need for you not to settle or there is a need for you to know exactly what it is that you bring to the table and allow the partner to either show you or step up um, to your level. And if they don't, like stop settling for anything less, um, making it seem like it's okay at this point, like we'll get there at some point, whether it's commitment, whether it's them financially um, becoming financially independent, whatever the situation is, you're not the mother or father of any of your partners, Taurus. So again, I feel like I don't need to tell you guys, but that's definitely what's coming on very strongly. So there is something of a toxic type of energy that either you're accustomed to or you're used to dealing with. Um, and sometimes putting the whole blame on the partner is making or doing a disservice to ourselves because you kind of have to look at yourself in the mirror and realize you're part of the problem when all you're doing is putting or making it seem like the other partner, your partner, uh, is the problem. Shadow side uh, with the moon card, there's certain things you're not accepting fully about yourself. Um, and the moment you're able to realize that you're able to unlock that awareness so that you don't continue doing that in your coming relationships or in your future relationships, Taurus. All right, my lovelies. Now we're going on to Gemini. Let's see what's going on with Gemini's Gemini, sun, moon, rising and Venus. Please speak to us in regards to Gemini, sun, moon, rising Venus in regards to love and romance. Oh, 
too many, putting them back in here. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Love and Romance for the month remaining of February 2022. All right, we have two cards that flipped. Seven of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands. So there's a person from your past, maybe a fire energy, Taurus, sorry, Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries. Um, for some of you guys, it could be a Taurus. Uh, <laughs> I see the pentacles here. So um, I feel like a person from your past is coming back around or will be reaching out to you in the coming days. Um, I feel like this was a person that you really cared for or you invested a lot into this connection. However, for some of you guys, it's almost like there was a feeling of a missed opportunity, but I'm going to be honest. I feel like this person could have had something to do with either leading you on or making you believe something that wasn't. It's almost like, you know, uh, stringing you along or making you feel like they were wanting the same thing you were wanting. But when it comes to emotions, they were just not ready to move on from an ex or someone from their past. However, I do see them coming back around. All right, let's see. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, February 2022. Here we go. So we're starting off here with the Seven of Wands. There's something that you're not wanting to take at face value. Could be the person that's coming back around. That's if you're not already dealing with them. You may be feeling a little bit guarded, like you can't fully trust completely. We have the Ten of Swords. You can't trust because something came to a conclusion or you were aware of the type of person they are or what they did in the past that you decided it's time to move on or you're not wanting to entertain that idea. However, with the Seven of Wands here, I feel like you're hesitant about it. You're hesitant. You're wondering. You're in your head. Two of Swords does indicate not knowing what to decide or feeling stuck in regards to this situation. All right. So we have here. Oh. Oh, wow. We have the Empress, Queen of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles, Ten of Cups, the Hanged Man, and the Seven of Cups. I see a lot of options. A lot of opportunities for you, Geminis, in regards to love and romance. I see an Earth energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. I also see a Libra energy here. Some of you guys may be dealing with the Pisces as well. Um, but I feel like in the past there was, you know, you seen this person extremely, like they had every single quality or everything you were looking for in a partner or in a relationship. And you've seen them as someone that were or that was extremely loyal at some point. With the Ace of Pentacles, the Hanged Man, and the Seven of Cups, I feel like things didn't progress or things didn't pick up between you two. Um, because this person was in the mentality of still having to deal with something from the past or letting go completely of the past. So it's kind of like the ex not being able to get over or like the person not being able to get over the X type of energy. I do see two female energies here. Now, it is a general reading. Um, but I feel like at some point, the person you were dealing with could have been dealing with two people, meaning you and someone else. Um, and there was a feeling of uncertainty. So to me, it's almost the energy of like dealing with you as well as dealing with an X that the ex kept promising I'm going to change, I'm going to do better, and they didn't fully want to move on, but they were unsure that they could bet on it only because they've let them down in the past. Um, I see them coming back around and wanting to pick up where things left off or wanting to prove to you um, that they see your value, that they see that you're the person that they would want to start something with or have some type of relationship with. But I see you struggling with wanting to either open up or wanting to trust them or give them the opportunity. Um, Seven of Cups does indicate don't jump into any type of commitments, Gemini, because I feel like you're going to have you're going to have options to choose from. And I feel like there is 
almost like an amazing opportunity that's going to be coming to you within from now to within a month's time span uh, of a new person coming into your life. And this is a person that is willing to put the same effort and energy that you're willing to put in a relationship. I feel like this person is coming from a very healing energy. So this is a person that is, in fact, emotionally available. Um, and this is a very, a very mature energy. And I'm also hearing that this person could, um, could be very professional or perhaps not the type you're used to dating. It could be a person that's very articulate or a person that is um, extremely intelligent. Uh, could be a boss um, energy. It could be someone that is financially independent or someone that has just that that type of energy of independence. Um, but I feel like what I'm hearing is being a little bit intimidated because you haven't dealt with this type of personality or this type of person that has all their shit together. However, I do see that this is a great opportunity um, to, to experience, to experience something different, not only that, but to have potential into stabilizing something that is long-term. And I feel like you are almost in the sphere of vibrating to this energy as well. So it could be that you, Gemini, have been either extremely motivated or focused in your finances, in your career. And that's when this person comes along. Um, and I feel like you guys ultimately do motivate each other. Um, so this is a, you know, it's kind of a situation of don't jump ahead only because I don't want you to miss this opportunity. I feel like you're going to be feeling a little bit overwhelmed, especially those of you guys that have been having like a pretty dry spell. Uh, it's been kind of dead in regards to your relationships or in regards to romance. It's going to start to pick up for uh, for you guys from now to a month's time frame. Like I said, um, I do see you guys having opportunities and a multitude of people to choose from. If you want me to be completely honest, um, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket is what they're saying. Uh, be open. All right, we're going to go to Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Spirits, what are the messages for Cancers? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance for the month remaining of February 2022. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. One more. All right, here we go. We're starting off here with the Knight of Wands. Quick movement. This is momentum. This is messaging. This is, um, for some of you guys, could be dealing with fire energy, Aries, Sagittarius, Leo type of energy. Eight of Cups. So there could have been a decision that was taken rather quickly for some of you guys walking away from some type of connection. The high priestess could have been because there was some type of revelation, some type of information or messages that came to you that revealed um, certain things that were being kept in the hidden. Uh, for others of you, I feel like there is a message that's going to be coming through, something that is unexpected, um, something that you were definitely not expecting. And I feel like for some of you guys, you're being guided towards a specific person that will be revealing their feelings for you and i feel like this is a person that you know this could be potentially someone that is in your inner circle or social circle but i still feel like you were not expecting that all right so we have the four of pentacles here three of wands eight of pentacles the hermit five of pentacles and ten of wands I see you guys oblivious. <laughs> I see you guys oblivious to the people that are interested in you. I feel like for some of you guys, you've been dealing with uh, some type of distancing or connection with someone from a distance. Um, and it's almost like they're not really putting effort at this point or they're not. They're giving you the hot and cold type of uh, treatment. Um, I, do, I, I do see you guys like you've tried to put effort or you've invested a lot. For some of you guys, you could have invested in this person, like having to go out of your way to see them, traveling. Uh, for others of you, it's being willing to put effort in traveling or going to see this person. 
I feel like this person hasn't been completely honest with you guys. Um, it's like they're holding back and there's a reason why they're holding back. I feel like at this point you're kind of over it, um, Cancer. Um, but I am also seeing that there are certain individuals that are around you that have been trying to either get your attention or have been trying to have the guts to reveal to you their feelings for you. This could be a Virgo that you're dealing with, or if you have a Virgo around you or in your group uh, circle, uh, this individual may be very much emotionally invested in you, but I feel like they're waiting for the perfect time. Um, however, I do see them coming towards you wanting to either don't be surprised if they come and they tell you, hey, um, this is going on and I was going to go have dinner with a friend. You want to come? They're not coming. I feel like it's going to be something casual, but they're making it seem like it's less than what it really is. And what it really is, is them wanting to invite you uh, out to dinner or something like that. Um, so if you do experience this at the end of, you know, February, beginning of March, um, where it's something casual, uh, just know that uh, this person is really trying to win you over or is trying to get closer to you. I feel it's not a coincidence and it's not something casual on their part. I feel like they've been waiting for this opportunity for a bit. Um, so if you are in fact single, uh, you know, make yourself, make it known that you are single because uh, you're going to be, I feel like something unexpected is coming and it's almost like right, it's coming right after you are in your head about a connection um, where you're unsure where this is going or where you stand with that person. I feel like around that time that you're experiencing those type of emotions is when this person will be declaring or professing their interest for you, Cancer. Don't be so guarded, Cancer. All right, let's go on to Leo. Let's see what's going on with my Leos. The Sun card. There's a relationship for some of you guys that's coming through. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. For the month remaining of February 2022. Let's see what's going on with Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Love and Romance. Love and Romance. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right. We're starting off here with the Three of Cups. Celebratory type of energy for some of you guys. You may be invited to some type of celebration, some type of wedding, uh, something that is social that is taking place in the month of February, beginning of March. Um, if you're invited, Leo, to go out to some type of social gathering, um, don't be quick to say no. Jump on that opportunity because I feel like it's going to lead you to certain type of connections. The next card here is the Ten of Cups, emotional fulfillment. So it's leading you to some type of emotional fulfillment, something you've been waiting for, you've been expecting for quite a while. For some of you guys, manifestations are coming through for you for the remainder of the month all the way to March. I feel that it's perfect timing when it comes to relationships and datings. So put yourself out there, Leo. First card here is the moon card. I feel like this full moon is definitely going to amplify. Oh, that's right. Duh. <laughs> we are having full moon in Leo. That's the reason why they were like something with the moon is definitely amplifying that energy. And then I pulled the nine of cups realizing, duh, full moon is in Leo. So you guys are definitely going to be very magnetic. Next card here is the three of wands. The Hermit card, the Eight of Pentacles, and the Five of Pentacles. Okay, Leos, I'm going to be honest with you. Stop complaining about being single. Stop complaining about, you know, I can't connect with someone. Like, I'm interested and then I lose interest. Like, da-da-da-da. Like, what they're telling you is stop being stuck in the mud. Be a little bit more social than you usually or that. I know Leos are, you guys are like the party people, right? But... A lot of the times are extreme. Um, sometimes we go through this through this cycle where 
we become a little bit more guarded of our energy and our, you know, the people we surround ourselves with. And with the Hermit card and the Five of Pentacles, I feel like you guys have slowly, progressively, um, you guys have slowly, progressively either be get on the Hermit mode or have progressively pulled your energy back and you're like picking and choosing who you want to, you know, be around. So I feel like for some of you guys, there's been this transition of wanting to be a little bit more reclusive. And what they're telling you is now is the time to put yourself out there, Leo. Nine of Cups of Emotional Fulfillment, Three of Wands, Expansion and Growth. There is definitely a connection or someone that will be coming towards you that is definitely going to be wanting to get your attention. Um, again, you know, the Five of Pentacles uh, with the Hermit gives me the vibe of like complaining about being single or complaining about... Uh, not finding someone that you can connect with, but not really doing anything to change that. It's almost like they're not going to come and find you. You have to put yourself out there. Go to places you've never been to. Um, stop doing things that are very routine-like. Because um, I feel that the more you experiment for this month and the beginning of March, the more grander the chances are to actually connect with someone that you guys can definitely vibe to and that you guys may have um, definitely chemistry, but the same mentality in regards to relationships and partnerships. Um, for some of you guys, you've just been really busy working, um, putting your nose to the grindstone and what they're telling you is that's okay. If you're going to go hard, go hard in every single aspect of your life, not just career and finances. Okay, my lovelies? All righty. Now is the time, Leo. Ooh, full moon in your sign too. You guys are going to be extremely magnetic. Capitalize on that. All right, let's go to Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Virgos. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Guys, give me one second. Let me have some coffee. I've been doing readings all day. I'm sorry my voice sounds a bit raspier than usual. <clears throat> have to have my my coffee gets me going <laughs> all right virgo let's see what's going on in your love life okay one more shuffle here we go so we're starting off with the high priest here huh very interesting i feel like for some of you guys you're going through this through this season in your life where you're acknowledging the experiences that you've have you have had in relationships or when it comes to relationships and i feel like for some of you guys you've been trying to go against the grain um so as an example if you were raised uh, very old school i feel like your whole life up until now you've been trying to do the opposite of that right having clandestine type of relationships or uh, no names or no like um, going against what the norms are. But I feel like deep down inside your heart, Virgo, you're coming to the realization that this is something that you actually do want and that you desire, whether it's commitment, whether it's the old school uh, getting a house, picket fence type of thing. Um, and I feel like there's uncertainty to that because there is a feeling of like, am I not being true to myself? Um, am I changing my way of thinking? And I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, I'm going to get you guys in a, on a little secret, Virgo. It's completely okay to change your fucking mind. That's part of growing. That's part of maturing. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, if at this point you realize that what you really want is commitment in marriage, there's nothing wrong with that. If that's where you feel like you're at at this point in your life. But you need to understand that the only one that holds the key to your happiness is yourself. And it comes uh, with the clarity of what it is that you want. Now the next card here is the king of wands. You may be dealing with a Taurus 
or you may be dealing with a fire energy, Aries, Sagittarius, Leo type of energy. Um, the star card, uh, Aquarius, uh, but this is also illumination. I feel like for a lot of you guys, you're going to go into this cycle of experiencing connections with people that are definitely interested in long-term commitment and monogamy. Uh, so for those of you guys that have been single for quite a while, um, do not despair because I do see a connection, some type of relationship or the deepening of a relationship um, that is going to be unfolding for you guys. And it's almost like you were not expecting that. First card here is the Page of Pentacles, the Magician, the Lovers, not surprised, the King of Swords, the Queen of Wands, the Justice. So again, we go back to the Page of Pentacles. Um... You know, this is about what we've been through, what we've, you know, what we thought we wanted at some point, and clearly uh, progressing or maturing our views on when it comes to relationships and partnerships. The magician um, manifesting for some of those of you guys that have been manifesting a relationship, um, do not be surprised because I feel like the month of March is definitely uh, when you're going to be meeting a specific individual that is going to be very important in your life. For some of you guys, this can actually turn into marriage. Um, for others of you, I feel like you've been putting effort and energy towards the partner that you've wanted. Um, but settling in the past and what spirit is telling you is no more settling, Virgo. I'm bringing to you exactly what it is that you want if you're patient. So it's almost like the lovers being at crossroads, having to make a decision. For some of you guys, you may be in between two people, um, but do not rush it. Allow time to reveal to you the person that's right for you. Because I feel like if you are patient with it and don't rush it, because I feel like in the past you've rushed it and you fucked it up. I'm going to be honest. And I feel like at this point, if you just let things unfold organically without having to rush um, to a relationship or having to rush into um, making a decision of being like, uh, you know, exclusively dating someone um, and just keep your, your options open and, and just allow time to reveal to you the person that is really interested in you, you're definitely going to end up with the person that is going to be long-term and that is going to give you the commitment you've been looking for. Um, again, my advice, don't rush into anything, Virgo. Let things reveal themselves to you because I feel like in the past, you've been a little bit immature when it comes to relationships, maybe even like so focused or obsessed over the person liking you that you kind of forget to you forget to understand that it also matters if you like the person. It's like you get so wrapped up into I want them to like me that you kind of forget you need to like them too. And then you end up in relationships where you really don't like the person or the person has nothing in common with you and you guys kind of go your own separate ways. But again, in the beginning, you were so fixated on them liking you that you kind of forgot do you even like this person. Um, so again, don't rush anything, let things unfold and you will be meeting the person that is going to be long-term for you in the next coming months, Virgo. All right, let's go to Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Let's see what's going on with Libras. In regards to love and romance, give us guidance, allow us to see. For this month, February 2022, Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, we're starting off here with the Three of Swords, some type of hurt or betrayal. There is an ending or a conclusion to some type of connection, uh, Libra. Um, a relationship or a connection that you put a lot of effort into uh, for some of you guys, you could be dealing with a person that um, is your baby daddy or your baby mama. Um, I feel like at this point, you need to understand um, that sometimes when things come to an end, it is best and it it's best and it's to our highest good to completely let go of that. And the reason I say that is three of swords with the world card is definitely talking about some type of betrayal or some type of heartache. Um 
But with the world card, this is finally coming to a conclusion. So for some of you guys, you're healing from past traumas. For others of you, this is you realizing a relationship has come to its conclusion and you're ready to either move on or emo emotionally disconnect yourself from that connection. Or for others of you, maybe you've refused to give yourself the opportunity to be happy again because you've been holding on to some type of hurt for quite a while. But that's finally coming to a conclusion. Your next cards here are the Two of Wands. Sorry, the Ten of Wands, Seven of Swords, Five of Wands, Page of Pentacles. We're getting the page very often here. The Magician and the King of Swords. Okay, so yeah, I definitely see that for some of you guys, you've been holding on to a relationship that has left you feeling either empty or empty-handed. It's almost like when I hear empty-handed, it indicates to me I've put a lot of effort, I've put a lot of energy, I've almost like sacrificed a lot of the things in my life to make this relationship or this connection work. And I feel like at this point, you understand that, Libra. And there's almost like a, I'm not going to allow this person to emotionally manipulate me anymore. Um, so I feel like the five of wands is definitely an inner struggle, something that you've been dealing with for a while. Um, but with the page of pentacles, there is, again, I feel like for those of you guys that are dealing with like with children, the children are involved. I feel that for some of you guys, that's the reason why you were dealing with bullshit or that's the reason why you were trying to make it work. Um, but the magician is here with the king of swords. And what they're telling you is there's a need for you to see things clearly and transparent for what they really are. Stop looking at things through rose-colored glasses. It's time that you see this, okay, if this person has betrayed me, if they've lied to me, or if they've emotionally manipulated me, when does it get to the point of saying enough is enough? Because, oh, because that's what love is. Love is patient. Yes, but love is not stupid. Being love or not, not love, but being in love um, there's a difference between having loyalty and enslaving yourself to your loyalty, allowing other people to take advantage of that. So again, I feel like there is clarity of mind here. I feel like you're coming to the conclusion or the understanding that enough is enough and you're no longer going to be okay with feeling like people are taking you for granted or like they're not appreciating what you do. Um, the magician is knowing your power. It also indicates, you know, counting your blessings and knowing what it is that you bring to the table when it comes to relationships. And the king of swords is, you know, yeah, sometimes Libras can be a little bit indecisive. Um, and that's the reason why you feel often in relationships, like you don't want to deal with things that are happening in the then and like in the now, in the here and now, um, because it's an uncomfortable situation to have to make difficult decisions um, when we are emotionally invested in something, it's really hard for you Libras, uh, to say, you know what, I'm done and completely walk away from it. But Libra is represented as the king of swords. So this, it, this is the understand, the knowing you are a person of intellect. You're a person that over analyzes sometimes, maybe even and delays making decisions because you want to make sure you make the right decision but with the king of swords here and the magician what they're telling you is you need to understand yes you're giving yes you're loving but you also have the power to make a decision and stick with it and strike the sword down and cut any connection that is either suffocating you that is emotionally manipulating you that is holding you back from your emotional fulfillment or happiness like you have that power libra because you hold that sword and you're up here in your mind trying to analyze what's the best decision but sometimes not making a decision is making a decision so if you've allowed people or in a relationship or dealing with someone that has constantly lied to you, has constantly deceived you. It's time to bring the sword down and cut those ties so that you can be able to walk towards the magician, walk towards your happiness and what you deserve. All right, my lovelies. 
All right, let's go with Scorpio. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus in regards to love and romance for the month of February 2022. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Let's see what's going on with Scorpios. Here we go. We're starting off here with the Six of Swords. I see you guys walking towards calmer waters for some of you guys. Um, being able to feel a little bit more grounded, um, being a little bit more clear-headed or clear-minded, being able to see things more clearly. Um, for some of you guys, you could have been dealing with some type of confusion or some type of feeling like you weren't in control of the situation. You do have the Eight of Pentacles here, so I do see you guys putting effort or have been putting effort in trying to solidify or stabilize some type of connection that may be at a distance for some of you guys. Um, for others of you, it could just be that you feel like your partner lately has been emotionally unavailable to you or like they've been distant, even though, I mean, this could even be if you're living with someone, um, it's more of an emotional thing, a feeling like there is some type of distancing or they're not present. Um, sometimes it could almost feel like when you're having a conversation with them, you kind of see them spacing out. Um, and it's almost a feeling of like, are you even here, even though they are or may be physically there? Okay, we have the shadow side here, the world, the three of swords, five of cups, king of wands, and ten of pentacles. I definitely feel like someone in this connection is definitely feeling like they're feeling like they've been either very patient with the other partner or like they've often made the other partner a priority and it's like the reciprocation is not there or you haven't felt the reciprocation at this point. Shadow side can indicate um, certain toxic traits about our partner that they continuously keep telling us that they're going to do better, that they're going to change or that they're going to work towards uh, this could be possessiveness, this could be jealousy, this could be uh, secrecy or feeling mm -hmm. like they, you know, feeling like they are not completely in control of their emotions. I don't want to go as far as to say physical abuse. However, some uh, may have experienced that. Um, but with the world card, there is an ending cycle to this. And in order to allow the healing to begin, you need to let go of what's hurting you. You need to let go um, of, you know, the reason why you continuously keep putting yourself in harm's way. Whether it's, like I said, physical, emotional, um, or even spiritual, you know, um, harm. Uh, and this could indicate, you know, manipulation. This could indicate, like I said, possessiveness. Um, we're often feeling like your partner is not fully trusting you. Um, for some of you guys, you may be dealing with, as an example, a partner that constantly is telling you, you know, I can't trust you because you lie to me, you say this, you say that. And somehow, some way, if the argument is about them, it turns into, it turns back into you or what you've been doing. Um, so this is a tactic of manipulation. And I feel that there is an understanding or a realizing of this and having the burden to having to make the decision um, to either end or walk away from this connection. For some of you guys, this could be dealing or finding out that your person hasn't been completely honest or that they've been stepping out of a relationship. With the five of cups, I do feel like this is emotional uh, an emotional situation where there's a lot of disappointment involved. Um, for some of you guys, it could be uh, as simplistic as the person was or the person that was telling you they were ready for or they were ready or wanting some type of commitment. This is realizing that they were full of shit and that they are too immature for that or that they've been dealing with multiple people. For others of you, this could be as serious as finding out 
Um, if you're married or in a long-term commitment, it could be finding out certain truths about your partner that they never revealed or they were never completely honest to you about. Um, and that may include dealing with other people or communicating with other people. However, you do have the Ten of Pentacles here. I feel like for some of you guys, um, especially those of you guys that have been single for a while, and it's like you continuously keep dating the same people almost just in a different body, what they're telling you is learn from past experiences. Learn and stop going after uh, your typical type. Uh, this could be, you know, that you have a tendency of putting a lot of importance in the physical um, and feeling like when you're dealing with someone that you're not obsessed over or that you're not as excited about, oh, I'm not going to give them the opportunity. Well, in essence, you're kind of, you know, you're kind of hurting yourself by not giving them an opportunity because you keep choosing the same type just in a different body, like I said. So in essence, you're the one that's hurting yourself. You can't really blame other people um, for hurting you or deceiving you. I mean, if we learn and go through that shit once or twice, by the third time around, we should be better. <laughs> we should be better at judging people's characters. Um, but there is something, there's some type of tendency here that you continuously keep doing. Um, and at this point, what they're telling you is that you need to understand that or come to terms with it so that you can progress from it. So as an example, if you have a tendency of only being interested in people that are emotionally unavailable because it becomes exciting, then the moment you realize that you're dealing with someone that is emotionally available, walk the fuck away from that. If you have a tendency of going after people that are extremely enticing to you when they show you some type of possessiveness, oh, that's so sexy, then stop going for that um, when you're just starting to deal with someone and they're showing you those type of colors because truth of the matter is that's who they are and it's going to become an issue at some point in the relationship. So this is, it basically comes down to letting go of old patterns and old behaviors to be able to embrace the longevity or the long-term commitment that you're looking for, uh, Scorpio. All right, so we're going to go now with Sagittarius. Let's see what's unfolding for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. By the way, if you guys like this video, definitely hit that like button, subscribe to our channel. Um, it keeps us more motivated, you know? For some reason, I don't know why the views have been going down. I think that YouTube is shadow banding me. Probably all the witchery shit I've been doing. <laughs> Anyways, let's see. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance for the month of February 2022. All right, so we have here... We have the Queen of Wands, the Nine of Cups, Ten of Cups, and the Three of Cups. And the Nine of Swords. A lot of cards. Um, all right. I'm feeling inclined to it. So we're going to start off here with the Five of Cups, some type of regret. Uh, Three of Pentacles, some type of regret in regards to a missed opportunity. The Moon card. I feel like the this full moon is definitely going to have you guys in your feelings or your emotions, Sagittarius. Um, or it could potentially have the person you're interested in in their feelings. Let me pull out one more card here. Okay. Alrighty. So what I'm seeing here is um, there could have been a missed opportunity for some of you guys. You could have been dealing with a water energy, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Um, I see Earth here with the Wheel of the Year, uh, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, Fire as well. Uh, another Sagittarius, Aries. I pretty much see all the signs here. Um, what they're telling me here, though, is right at the center, I have the Nine of Cups, which is the desire of wish fulfillment. Three of Cups being sidetracked or uh, wanting, to, wanting to connect or being interested in someone, but then quickly changing um, either your mind or the desire to want to go after it because of the nine of swords. There is like a lot of being in your head, a lot of self-doubt. Um, the ten of cups is 
you know, happiness. This is the, 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 the most beautiful card you can get uh, as far as relationship wise. Um, Ten of Cups is emotional fulfillment and being able to embrace and live in that. Uh, with the will of the year, having the opportunity to do that or to find that. But it's almost like you are what becomes a detriment to your own happiness, Sagittarius. So this could represent um, self-sabotaging. This could represent um, stating or saying that you want a relationship, but then, you know, the moment you start to put effort towards something, you get either sidetracked or you have a tendency of, uh, losing interest rather quickly and not being able to see how far that connection can get or can go. Um, for others of you, it could also represent having a tendency of um, finding someone as exciting, as passionate and intense as you. And this doesn't necessarily mean it's a positive thing. Why? Because there's inconsistency there. There's some type of instability or I'm hearing like a very quick, the losing of interest. Um, it, it's almost like the moment it doesn't become a challenge anymore, you're emotionally uninvested or you pull away from that. Now, this could be the person that you're dealing with as well. Keep in mind, it is a general reading. However, what they're telling you here is um, stop self-sabotaging relationships. Stop, you know, making people jump through hoops or, or, or go... Uh, above and beyond to show you that they want you in their life. Um, this could be a self de uh, a, a self defense mechanism that you have a tendency of doing, but you also need to understand that when it comes to relationships, the other people that we deal with also have gone through shit. They've also been hurt in the past. They've also been tested. Um, what gives you the right to feel like they have to go above and beyond to show you like, are you doing the same thing in return? And if you're not, again, we go back to you can't keep pushing people away and then expect them to not walk away because then the moment they walk away, you're like, well, they must have not cared because they didn't fight hard enough. Um, and what Spirit is telling you here is it, this is a road that is a two-way, right? It's a, uh, It goes both ways. Uh, it's not just what you've been through. It's also what other people have been through. It's learning from those mistakes and learning to balance and heal from that so that you can become a healthier version, um, a healthier partner for the person that's coming towards you. But that needs to start with yourself. I feel like you self-sabotage a lot, Sagittarius. Um, whether it's often questioning when things are going good, you know, is this going too good? And then you start to test them. Uh, you immediately go into testing mode. And it's like, there's some people, as an example, you're going to meet people that are going to be like, the moment you give me the sense of like, you're playing games, I'm, I'm done. I'm not dealing with that. Um, because that's where they're at at this point in their life. They're not about wasting time. So you can't really be upset at those that walk away from you after you've tested them for a while. Now, keep in mind, this is a general reading. So if it doesn't resonate with you, this could be uh, your partner that's feeling this way or the person you're dealing with. Um, but it does come down to, you know, stop pushing people away. Uh, stop feeling like if they don't agree with you, it means they're against you. It's actually quite the opposite of that. But you need to realize that in order to be able to, like I said, heal from past experiences and also be able to pull towards you or attract to you a healthy partner. And I feel like for a lot of you Sagittarians, you've either have not experienced that or don't even know what it feels like to date someone that is emotionally available, someone that is healed, someone that is a healthy, that can give a healthy relationship. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Let's see what's going on with Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Okay, so we have the Queen of Cups here. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of February 2022. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Love and romance for Capricorns. What's unfolding for them for this month? 
February 2022. All right, here we go. We're starting off here with the Seven of Cups, feeling a little bit confused in regards to a connection, something that was very intense or you felt very intense about. Ace of Wands usually indicates a new beginning. Uh, and the Ten of Swords. Okay, so what they're telling me here with the Seven of Cups, you're having a lot of opportunities or you will be experiencing a lot of opportunities, Capricorn, where you're going to be very, very much... What's the word I'm looking for? You're going to be very... What's the word I'm looking for? It's almost like... Tempted, that's the word. <laughs> You're going to be very tempted to go towards something that is extremely exciting, um, but it's something that should have came to an ending already. So this could be dealing with uh, some someone, I should say, dealing with someone that in the past they could possibly have been dealing with multiple people or they may have felt like they were, you know... Um, God's greatest gift to earth. Uh, the Ace of Wands is a recharging, a leveling up. Um, it's almost like them seeing you in a different light and wanting to know if they can come back into your life. Ten of Swords, close that door, Capricorn. Um, I, I'm hearing like I've invested a lot into this. Finally, they're coming back around, but I feel like they're coming back around for all the wrong reasons. And for some of you guys, it could be like you're they see you shining or they see you doing like really good things and they want to be a part of that. Um, but ultimately, is it really what you want? Do you really want them to be around you when they start to see you do good? Where were they when you were having a difficult or where were they when uh, you thought things were going good and then they went ghost on you? That type of energy. Queen of Cups does represent being open, right? Being emotionally open, putting yourself out there. Seven of Swords is, you know, we go back to what I just said. Um, why would you want someone to come back into your life when they see you doing good, when they see you leveling up? Uh, Seven of Swords is them not being completely honest. Um, like I said, they see you going on to much better things and it's like, I want... You know, I want to be in Capricorn's life. I want to see what they're up to. I want to see what's going on in their life. So it's not really because of love or because they miss you. It has more to do with excitement. And I think the Ace of Wands clearly stated that. It's almost like they're starting to see you in a different light and they see that your life is being much more exciting. Um, and that could be the reason why they want to know what's going on in your life. And the only way to do that is to continue popping up or reaching out to you once in a while. Um, but I feel very strongly like don't waste your time with that type of fuckery, Capricorn. The next card here is the Five of Wands, Seven of Pentacles, and the Five of Swords. Yeah, I feel like the connection that you're dealing with or the person you've been dealing with is a person that perhaps has a tendency of being emotionally manipulative. Um, I'm not ready for commitment because I've been hurt. I'm not sure what I want because I've been hurt and I don't want to get hurt again. Um, but I do care for you, Capricorn. It's like, do you? Do you really care for me? Because you're wasting my time at this point. Um, you're not putting effort. You're going ghost on me once in a while. Um, it's like, I'm not going to allow you to continue playing these games. And um, sure enough, with the Five of Wands, Seven of Pentacles, it's like they will keep returning if you keep allowing them to think that they have the upper hand when it comes to you. Five of Swords indicates to me ego-based. This is a person that you're dealing with that um, is ego-based or it's a person that has a tendency of getting their way or playing, uh, playing games just to prove to themselves that they're able to um, manipulate you into giving them or allowing them to come into your life. So my advice, Capricorn, Bring an end to that shit. And the reason I tell you is because you're going to be experiencing a lot of changes that are happening, not only in your career and finances, but also in relationships when it comes to love. I see opportunities coming to you. Queen of Cups represents love. Uh, it also represents, you know, being emotionally available. 
It's like, don't open yourself up to people that you know are fuck girls or fuck boys. At this point, you know what you want. You know how you want to be treated. If they're not treating you that way, walk away from it and don't even waste your time. Um, Seven of Pentacles, it's something that you've, it's been ongoing, something that you've been going through or it's, it's some type of pattern and we need to bring up an ending to that pattern so that you can fully embrace uh, a healthy connection, a loving connection. All right, my lovelies. Now we're on to Aquarius. All right, let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarians, I love you guys so much, but you guys are so funny. A lot of the times when I do your readings, um, you know, they'll get offended and they'll be like, well, that's not me. That doesn't sound nothing like. <laughs> oh, I love Aquarians. I have Aqua in one of my big threes, so I can relate, but sometimes we need to get out of our feelings, you know, stop being so prideful. Aquarius. <laughs> All right, let's get into your reading. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius in love and romance for this month of February 2022. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. One more. Here we go. We're starting off here with the death card. Transformation. Uh, there are certain endings that are unfolding for you. I feel that for some of you guys, you could have been dealing with a situation of feeling like you were questioning or wondering, should you walk away from some type of connection or the person you're dealing with? Um, I feel like all points or all signs are going to point to yes. Um, whether you're ready or not, there's major changes that are unfolding in your love life. You have the six of wands, so there is some type of victory here. There is a feeling of perhaps being or noticing that you're going to be in a hot commodity. You're going to be a hot tamale uh, in the next coming weeks, Aquarius. Uh, you may be pulling, you know, people that you wouldn't necessarily um, or people wouldn't necessarily be attracted to you. Um, this could be a completely different type of uh what's the word I'm looking for? Completely different. The opposite of what you're used to attracting. I feel like, cause I'm hearing like turning and realizing they're looking at you and then you turn back and then you turn back around to just double check, uh, because you're usually not used to that type of attention. So I definitely do see things, uh, going up, uh, for the better for you guys, you do have the four of cups here. Get out of your comfort zone, Aquarius, for the next coming month. Um, I feel like doing things in repetition or doing, you know, routine things is something that needs to be shaken up. So my advice is take a different route. Uh, if you go to a specific, you know, restaurant or something during the weekend, try to go to a different place only because I feel like being more spontaneous is going to open more doors up for you when it comes to love and romance. All right, we have the strength card here, the nine of cups, the star card, beautiful energy here, the world card, king of cups, and the six of cups. I see you guys trying to revisit a past connection for some of you guys this could be a person from the past popping back up again strength card is um you know being independent i feel like for some of you guys your wish fulfillment or what you would hope for to find in a partner would be someone that doesn't want to cage you in aquarius someone that's going to accept you for all of who you are and be able to be okay to embrace um to embrace either your freedom or your free way, your free way of thinking, um, and it's almost like you find some type of comfort in starting relationships or partnerships with friends. Now, for those of you guys that have never dated a friend, um, I feel like, and this is specifically for those of you guys that have not dated a friend or in your friend circle, I feel like someone will be revealing their feelings to you. Now, this could be a Taurus, this could be a Leo, or this could be a Scorpio. Um, 
And I feel like they've been either dealing with you or you've been knowing them for quite a while. And I feel like they were scared at some point to want to take the plunge, to want to take the jump um, because they don't want to lose that friendship. But I feel like this is a perfect match, Aquarius, because I feel like um, this person already knows who you are and knows your personality and you know them. And there's almost like a a breath of fresh air that I'm sensing, that I'm feeling here. It's almost like finally, you know, I can emotionally connect with someone that is not going to try to change me, that is okay with me being the way I am. Um, and I feel like there's a perfect harmony and perfect balance in this connection. Again, like I said, strongly, strongly, I'm sensing that this is a friend or someone in your inner circle um, that will be revealing uh, their feelings for you. Um, for some of you guys, this could even be like a being out in a party, some type of gathering. There's a little bit of booze flowing um, and it gets physical or you guys get to the point of being touchy feeling. Um, and then, you know, they reveal to you their feelings for you. And I feel like this is a person that's been either feeling you for a while or has been eyeing you for a while. Um, for others of you, you could have been dealing with a situation where there was a physical connection, but there is no labels there. Um, and I feel like in this connection, you've had, you've been the one uh, to either carry the connection or the relationship, or it's you, the one that's been having to put your emotions on the line without really getting reciprocation. Um, I feel that that, you know, that time frame is coming to some type of conclusion. Um, and within that time frame, there is someone that will be stepping up or there will be someone that will be catching your eye, Aquarius. All right, my lovelies. Now we're going to Pisces. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Let's see what's going on with Pisces. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance. You guys let me know down in the comments if you guys prefer these videos or if you prefer the ones that are uh, separate for each single sign. Um, you know, if you guys want to see more videos, definitely like and subscribe to our channel um, so that you guys can help the algorithm on my channel um, because it is a, you know, more difficult process to, you know, be uploading uh, a video for each single sign. It's a lot of, you know, time consuming, uh, et cetera, and a lot of effort that goes into my already busy schedule. Um, and, you know, views have been going, have been declining. Um, so it's like, I, I'd rather just do all the videos together or all the signs together. You guys let me know. All right, Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance for the month of February 2022. Also, I've been thinking of starting a new channel um, where I would just uh, continue doing the tarot readings on this channel and on the other channel, um, just focusing on the witchcraft part of my practice. You guys let me know how you would prefer that. If you would prefer for me to continue doing the way I've been doing or if you want a separate channel. Um for witchcraft things <laughs> and this channel just uh rendering uh readings and divination all right so we're starting off here with the two of cups pisces um this is a connection or deepening of a connection um being completely honest or transparent with your partner or person of interest nine of cups could represent emotional fulfillment i feel like for some of you guys if you're not trying to get pregnant be careful. I feel like uh, you guys are going to be extremely fertile uh, the remainder of the month going into March. Uh, Seven of Wands, uh, being a little bit or feeling a little bit like you need to guard yourself. Um, I feel like this has more to do with the tendency of when things are going good, you often question, uh, Pisces, is this too good to be true? Or almost the energy of the feeling of waiting the other shoe to drop. Um, what they're telling you is change your way of thinking when it comes to this. Um, sometimes when things are going good, it just means that we deserve it. It means that we deserve that break, that we deserve to experience happiness uh, or complete happiness. A lot of the times when we deal with a lot of difficulties in our life and we become accustomed 
to negative experiences, uh, it becomes difficult to accept the happy moments or the blessings. Um, so this has more to do with changing your way of thinking um, or often feeling like when things are going good, you're questioning it too much. You're just creating tension there. You're creating blockages that are not even there. All right, so we're starting off here with the Page of Wands, Ten of Swords, Ace of Wands, Page of Swords, a lot of communication, lovers, and the Eight of Cups. Pisces, if there was some type of ending or some type of separation or dis distancing from someone that you were either interested in or that you were dealing with, I see them coming back around trying to communicate with you. I feel like the reason why this could have come to an end, there could have been some type of deception or the person was misleading you. They weren't completely honest. However, I do see them coming back around and trying to reconnect. Um, what they're telling you is wherever you're at at this point in your life, um, don't jeopardize anything that you have going on right now for someone from the past. I feel like it'll crash and burn rather quickly. I feel like they are extremely inconsistent and that's just who they are at this point. Um, take it for what it is. You know, count your blessings for what time was spent. Move on from this situation, my lovelies, because I feel like you have a lot of momentum and you have a lot of blessings surrounding you and unfolding. But I feel like you may be tempted from now all the way to March to jeopardize some type of connection over someone from the past. And what they're telling you is, do not jeopardize it. If at this point you've walked away from this connection, continue walking away. Um, if you have been recently dealing with someone, put more effort and energy towards that connection. I feel like uh, it'll become more stable or things will start to stabilize a little bit more the moment you stop holding on to the past and focus here in the present and in the future. Um, there is a major energy of like, you know, what, where we're at right now, what was is no longer. It's time to move on and let go, but let go completely without fear. So it's almost like I see you walking towards, I see you walking forward, but often looking to the side or looking to the back, like turning your back, looking to the past. And what they're telling you is in order to fully embrace um, a connection, especially those of you guys that recently started dealing, dealing with someone, um, in order to fully embrace and be present in the now is to fully commit to the cause, whether it's the cause of dating, whether it's the cause of getting to know someone. Um, because when we keep looking to the past, you're not fully present. And, and then we compare, right? Well, I don't feel the connection as strong as I did with the person in the past. When a lot of the times the reason for it is because you, you have the person in the past in this pedestal where you focus primarily on the missing of them instead of what their treatment was towards you throughout the whole relationship. So again, um, if you are dealing with someone new or will be dealing with someone new in the month of March, try the best you can to you know, be focused in the present and in the future. Um, stop wondering about the past. And if this person from the past does come back around, they're telling you don't jeopardize um, what's already been started or what's unfolding for someone in the past that has already let you down or wasn't completely honest with you. All right, my lovelies. All right, I want to wish you guys all the very best. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoy these videos. Let me know definitely in the comments below uh, if you guys would want me to start a new channel where I would just f solely focus on uh, the witchcraft side of things and leave this channel uh, just for divination and the tarot readings or if you guys prefer um, that I continue doing both on this channel, you guys let me know. Comment below. Sound off. I wish you guys the very best and we'll see each other soon. Till then, bye.